I want to bring you into the conversation now retired Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, Vice President for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. These are interesting times. Uh, you know, the, the, the president uh, locking down flights or travelers from China and then and then restrictions on travel to and from Europe. Has it been effective or is it too little too late? No, I actually I, I think this administration's actually been pretty strategic in dealing with the virus. The first thing you want to do is keep it away from your shores as long as possible. And while that's important is there is an expectation that when the flu season comes to an end, that uh, the, the spread will stop. That'll buy us months to develop new therapeutics and vaccines. So the longer we kept it from getting here, the bigger difference that made. And uh, stopping that first wave from China was great. Unfortunately, there was a second wave because uh, there are two places of concern right now, Italy and Iran, uh, both of which kept the door open to Chinese um, uh, people coming in. Uh, Iran, it's been completely devastating. Uh, Italy has a, a large Chinese migrant population. A lot, of, a lot of them went home for the Chinese New Year and then came back. And of course, once it's in Italy, because of the Schengen, which is the 25, six plus countries that have common borders, essentially it, it floods all of Europe. And so the second wave of the travel ban, slowing that coming here from Europe is important. People say, well, it's already here. But the point is, is now we have to break the back of the spread of the disease. And if you're trying to drain the bathtub, you don't want to leave the faucet on. So we have to continually look for ways to stop importing the disease while we started breaking here. And what I was very excited about yesterday in the Rose Garden speech was the recognition that this administration really gets it. By and large, spreading the, the, the spread of the disease and protecting the most vulnerable populations, that really falls to state and local governments internal to the United States. And what the administration is, has done is introduce a whole raft of measures to really reinforce their abilities to deal with that at the local level, which really is the most efficacious and effective place to deal with it at this point. You wrote in a piece on FoxNews.com that our viewers might want to check out that, that President Trump is being much more forward looking than his critics, especially when it comes to this national emergency declaration. What do you mean by that? Well, one issue I think is, is testing. I agree, testing is important. Uh, it's not just important in terms of understanding where the disease is spreading, but at this point, we know it's inside the United States. We have 320 million people. If we want to break the back of this in, in the weeks before the end of the flu season, then social distancing is, is really the most effective measure. And Americans, I think, are, are largely ready to do this by and large. We see state and local governments standing up to this. And what the United States, what the president did is he, he announced measures which are going to be are impactful today. They're going to right now help people deal with this. And I think that's important. Similarly, with, with uh, people that are affected economically, uh, you know, this, this is really only, you know, with other few industries, we really haven't felt the economic impact of this yet. But they were already rolling out measures in order to help small businesses and individual workers. So I do think that these are things that are jumping ahead of the problem rather than waiting to say, oh, my God, we're in crisis mode here. What are we going to do about that? Yeah. And let's hope that the Fed's decision to reduce interest rates practically to nothing is going to help stem some of the economic damage. Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano from the Heritage Foundation.